Welcome to Vision Cast, and uh, today we have a tremendous, tremendous program that we're bringing to you today. And I have as my, the one that's hosting with me, none other than Ryan Kuklinski that is hosting with me today on the program. Ryan, how does it feel to take the place of Julie? It feels great, actually. I'm, I'm really privileged, and I hope that I line up with Sister Julie here today. Thank you for having me on. I'm real excited to be on with you today. Everybody was expecting Julie, but today we have Ryan because we have two tremendous guests that are with us today. We have Holland Davis, mm -hmm. that is the founder of a pastor of Calvary Chapel in San Clemente. Mm -hmm. And then also... Uh, Holland is also the founder of Worshiping Incorporated, an independent distribution platform for inspiring worship songwriters. And he's been talking to us a lot about worshiping and about the music and about those songwriters that God is using in different places, not only here in the United States, but different places around the world. And then we also have Ryan Reese, that uh, he was a little boy when uh, I met his father, his father, Raul Reese, that's the pastor of Calvary Chapel, before it was West Covina. Now, where is he? It's in uh, Diamond Bar now. In Diamond Bar, and uh, tremendous, tremendous man of God that God has used in a tremendous way. And then also you've come up now, and you're involved in ministry, yep. and you're the co-founder of that whatever, the whosoever, whoever, <laughs> whosoever, the whosoever, <laughs> the whatever, <laughs> whosoever yeah. movement, yeah. nonprofit organization that empowers students at public schools around the world to make a positive choice, no matter what the circumstances may be. But today I want to start out with uh, Holland. Holland, tell us a little bit about what you're doing and the ministry that God has given to you. And I don't know how you could do all these things. You're also the founder and pastoring Calvary Chapel, right? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, from the time I was saved, I mean, I got saved in the Jesus movement in the 60s or actually in the 70s, early 70s. And, um, you know, I had one of those conversions where I heard the voice of God audibly say, Holland, I love you. And that just changed my life. Those words just changed my life. And then um, I remember my dad was in the military. So we were in Japan at the time, moved back to the United States, went to a church, saw the, the movie Crossing the Switchblade. Mm. And when I saw that movie and I saw the power of the gospel to change lives. I just thought, that's what I want to do wow. for the rest wow. of my life, because right. I want to serve the Lord. And I uh, met with my preacher at that time. He said, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you, you know, because you got to go to seminary and all these other things. Mm. And he made it really hard for me to figure that out. Um, and so I came to California, heard this guy on the radio say, the Lord is moving in this church in Costa Mesa called Calvary Chapel. And just come and hear the word and be equipped to serve the Lord. And that's where I got my equipping. And at the time was doing worship and as a worship leader, became a worship leader of a church at 16. Wow. And so wow. at the age of 16, I was the help start uh, Calvary Chapel in Vista, was worship leader there. And then even uh, became the youth leader. At mm -hmm. 17, I was the youth leader of, of in, you know, in Calvary Chapel Vista. And I mean, I was a youth. Wow. And yet they, you know, that was what the Lord was doing back then. That's powerful. And so that was always been in my bones just to preach and teach God's word. We began doing Bible studies and it began just blowing up. And so we started the church with eight people. Uh, we just moved into our first building. 
which was a feat in and of itself. And we're just seeing God do wonderful things. But in the midst of all of this, uh, also worked with Maranatha Music for a while and was involved in um, some projects called Wow Worship, which a lot of people have seen those wow blue and green and orange. And uh, I wrote a song called Let It Rise that was uh, became featured at the Promise Keeper events and was on the very first Wow Worship recording, and which went multi-platinum. And so it's, it, it's, it's not like, a burden for me. It's just kind of oozes that's, out of me, you know? That's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when that's God how is, God works, right? God gives you a gift. It comes naturally. You, you actually enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. And you're working with, with songwriters and mm -hmm. you're helping out songwriters. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, one of the things I learned in the music business is, um, you know, there is a there is a, a certain model that oftentimes record companies are looking at, and but yet I was discovering out in the church that there were these incredible songs that were being written, but because they didn't fit a particular marketable model, they weren't being heard. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, we started a, a label at Maranatha called Worship Underground, mm. and I got this demo tape from this worship leader out of Texas. And it was, it was terrible. It was a terrible demo <laughs> tape. But it just sounded awful. But Gotta keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the bottom line is there was something special about this guy. And I, so I thought, you know, I'm just going to pay attention to him, encourage him. And then uh, he sent me his next project. And, and it, was, it was the one. It was the one that we needed to take to the world. And that guy was a guy by the name of David Crowder. Mm. And so we signed him to his very first record deal and released his very, you know, his actually his second project. And it was a church project for the church. And so I just gave me a picture that there's things happening in the church that we were missing. And, um, and so we started a thing called worshipsong.com that gives independent songwriters a way to get their songs out and let the church decide what songs they want to sing. And it's wonderful because we've seen uh, great success with songs getting out into the, you know, into the, into the church worldwide. Now, how do you see the worship today? <clears throat> you know, you see it different than years ago or? I, well, I There's do. There's a real emphasis on worship right now. There is. And it's, and which tells me that the, that everyone's turning to the Lord. You know, but within the midst of that, you see certain groups that are um, that are nailing it. Like you sense the presence of God. Others that it's more like an entertainment kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen both of those. I, I've seen a real growth in people wanting to be just like something instead of letting God just do authentically through wow. them what he does, you know. Um, that's one of the things I loved as I was watching some of the Victory Outreach um, uh, videos and conferences is that there's this authentic, organic music that's coming out that is gospel oriented, that's preaching the good news, but also that's pointing people vertically to the Lord in worship. And it's just a natural outflow of what God is doing through the ministry. And that's really what we're looking for. That's really what the church is looking for, real authentic heart cry, uh, people connecting with Jesus in a very raw and real and authentic way. And when that happens, that's electrifying. Mm. Mm -hmm. And with us, it's uh, our ministry, which is inner city ministry and cutting edge type of ministry. So whatever you're doing, whatever you have inside is going to come out. Yeah. It's going to come out in your preaching and it's also going to come out in your music. Mm -hmm. Is that the way it is? That is how it is. And, uh, and that's really what God anoints. You know, God anoints us being who he created us to that's be. Good. He doesn't anoint us trying to be like someone else. Because I've, I've, I've seen all the people like, we want to be the next Bethel. We want to be the next this. We want to be the next that. And I'm like, why don't you just do what you do? Because God loves that. And he anoints that. And he blesses that. And, and that's always what I'm looking for when I'm looking at new movements and things that God is, is uh, you know, kind of shining on. Are they being authentically true mm. to who they are? You know, when we, we first started, it's kind of funny, you know. We started, well, 50-something years ago, and uh, we started with hymnals. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, now That's turn right. to page 65 <laughs> in your hymnals. And love lifted me. Yeah. I didn't have any musicians. And then what I did, I said, we, 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 need, we need musicians in this place. So I got a hold of a trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was making a lot of noise, man. <laughs> I think I was killing the servant trying to play. I had Mickey Cruz one time, and he came to preach, you know. And then he comes, and then he sits. We're sitting on the platform. And then all of a sudden, I pull out my trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> He looked at me. What <laughs> in the world yeah. are you doing? Yeah. I think I made more noise than actually music. But you know, in the beginning, it was it was so different. You know, come out of Bible school, they teach you how to lead. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know, and this is the way we did it in the very beginning. But there's been a slowly changing and changing and mm -hmm. God began to give us musicians and also singers as well mm -hmm. and look where we are today you can see the yeah. the change mm -hmm. in worship from 50 years ago mm -hmm. a big big change yeah. that has taken place and you could just see it you know God has raised up different ministries you know like uh, the one in in, in uh, what is it Ca in, not Canada Australia mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Hillsong, Hillsong. Hillsong yeah. Yeah. that their whole ministry is actually worship, you mm -hmm. know, so many different places. And you've been in different places like that where you've seen, have you seen a change take I, place? I have. And one of the things I love right now is there's just a real hunger in the church for the presence of God. Mm. They just are hungry for Jesus. And when people are hungry for Jesus, he's there in great power and might. And he lets you know that he's there. And he does wonderful things in your midst. And, and so I'm, and one of the definitions I use for worship is that worship is our prayer set to music. So it's, mm. it's, a, it's our sung prayers. And so it's us talking to Jesus. Yeah. And that's been a major shift that I've seen. It's, it's not so much songs about Jesus. It's not so much songs about, you know, we're the army of God and we're here to, you know, to tear down the devil. It's Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we want you. We welcome you. We, we're just, we want more of you, Lord. Just fill us, renew us, save us, heal us, redeem us, deliver us. It's like, it's wonderful. That's what brings down the presence of God mm -hmm. in a service when you begin to really worshiping him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody opening up their hearts and worshiping God. That's where you begin to feel the presence and the spirit, mm -hmm. spirit of yeah. God. Well, you know, uh, we're going to be having uh, Ryan Reese is going to come and we're going to be talking to him. But before we do that, uh, Ryan, uh, you have, we have some announcements and maybe you can share with the folks. Yeah, before I do, I want to say something. I know you said that, you know, you, you, you would make some noise with the trumpet, but I think one thing that a lot of the ministry may not know, but Pastor Sonny knows music. I, I, I stand amazed yeah. at your ability. He can get behind any instrument really? or get behind an organ. He has an organ in his living room, if you guys don't know that. But I, I can't play it, though. Oh, he can play. He's got, he's got some skills. And, uh, man, it's real powerful what you're saying, too. I, I agree totally. This generation wants something genuine. You know, it's funny. I can, I can yeah. hear when somebody's off. Yeah. yeah. Can, yeah I can, uh -huh. you know, listen, and this yeah. guy's off. That one's off. Yeah. This other one's off. Sometimes I even I just, after the service, I go up, and they don't like it. I go up to the musicians, <laughs> yes. and I say, you know what? You were off, and you were off, and you just got to blend together, and they're looking all good. <laughs> <laughs> Airy, airy you know, my here. wife my wife has that give, too. Oh, really? Yeah, she can tell when I'm off. Oh, and she, oh. <laughs> she lets me know. <laughs> they usually can, right? They usually can. They usually can. Yeah. Ryan, you have a few things you want to share? Yeah, yeah. I'm real excited to be here today. And I know there's a lot of people watching from all over the world. And we're the type of ministry that we don't just want to have you in one session or one show showing. We want to connect with you and get you involved in what God is doing. And here in Victory Outreach, we have a lot of things that are taking place. 
and we want you to stay connected. We want you at this time, right now, we want you to start a watch party. Those that are watching on Facebook, start a watch party. Let's get the word out. We have some exciting guests with us today. And also, too, if you have questions or you want to reach out to us, you could do so by emailing us at visioncast at victoryoutreach.org. We are also live on Instagram at victoryoutreachint. Facebook, you could access us at Victory Outreach International, and many of us know that we have been hitting this very hard, and that is our YouTube channel at Victory Outreach International. We want to stay connected with you no matter what place you are watching from, from all over the world. And not only that, but also we, we, want to, we have a global vision. God has given us a global vision to reach every single inner city of the world. And how do we do that? We are able to do that through the form of United We Can. God has given us a global vision. He's given us a mandate. And to meet that mandate, we come together collectively and we give of our finances unto United We Can. And today we're going to give that opportunity here today that you could go ahead and participate in giving to United We Can and play a part in the international vision and the world that God has called us to reach. We have three ways to give here today. You could do so by mailing. You could also do so through push pay, or you could also visit our online website at victoryoutreach.org. We have an app as well that you could access all of these different ways to give. Along with that, there is a QR code that they're going to put on the screen right now. You could scan your phone camera over it and you'll be able to access the link. Along with that, there is a link in the bio right underneath this video. You can go ahead and click to access that. And we want to encourage you to give unto the international vision. And let's reach the world together through United We Can. And listen, not only that, but we have some video announcements for you at this time. And we want you to turn your attention to these videos. Generosity made simple. Text VOI to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter your amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, enter your payment details and confirm your gift. Thank you for your generosity. Now we can stay connected wherever you go. Download the Victory Outreach app and stay connected with Victory Outreach International. Get important updates and announcements. Learn more about our ministries. Stay connected with events, prayer requests, and more. Watch the latest video in our media section. Easily share content on social media within the app. Give from your phone in seconds. A convenient way to stay connected. God's people are not going to go back the same. And then God says, where well, you said you could not do it. That's the place that I have called you because you're not going to do it, but I'm going to be doing it through you. There are thousands and thousands of people that have been touched, that have come through the home, that have come to our churches. Not only do we have a local vision, but God is going to send you out, and He's going to send you out, and He's going to send you out, and He's raising us up, and many of you are going to be pastors, you're going to be evangelists. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. This October, we're coming together, preparing for one purpose, a United We Can effort, Run for Hope, in 12 different locations. Run for Hope is more than just a 10K or 5K run. It's a movement fueled by passion, courage, hope, faith, and inspiration. Join us for this year's Run for Hope of unstoppable help. Register today at runforhope.victoryoutreach.org. We are in it to make a change. how far you've come. God, we offer, oh God, our lives to you, Lord. And I pray there will be a revival of prayer, a revival of sacrifice, a revival, oh God, of paying the price, oh God, from the young to the oldest in the name of Jesus. What we need, what we're looking for is happening. 
Jewish eyes of the vision, protectors and guardians of the calling and the vision of Victory Outreach. God has given us an overall purpose of reaching the inner cities of the world. As we could see, so many powerful things are taking place, and I'm excited for all of the things that we have ahead. Make sure you mark your calendars for everything you've just seen. You do not want to miss out. And we're back here today, and I'm very, very, very excited to connect with the great men of God that we have here today. And we have with us, many of us know him from Victory Outreach International. He's attended some of our conventions. He's also spoken at one of our high school sessions that we had for our young adult and student ministry. And it's so great to have you, Ryan. Man, it's, I feel like we're kindred. Know. You know, we yeah. both, we, God has given us a lane to work with this generation. Yep. And since the moment we've met, you felt like something just ignited. And Ryan, man, it's been a blessing just to watch your journey and to see what God's doing. And I think, man, you have such a powerful, powerful ministry. Why don't you tell the people about what God has been doing through your life, right, right. a little bit yeah. about yourself as well. Yeah, dude, hey, thanks a lot for uh, having me back on uh, with Victory Outreach. It's, I keep connecting with you yeah. guys. It started on a plane in, in, on our way to Israel. Israel. And right. then you and my dad reconnected, yeah. reconnected with them in the back, with your, you know, your mom and everything. And it was... Uh, it's just been awesome to keep coming back, and, and uh, you know, we're all brothers in, in yeah. Christ, and we all have the same mission. It's the Great Commission, yeah. and that's the thing that I really love about uh, Victory Outreach is that you guys are in the inner city. You're, you're going to the streets. You're going to where the need is. We just saw that treasure film, and that thing was so powerful, and it's just this is what the church needs today is we got to be authentic. We've been talking about um, authenticity on yeah. this, this show is that the world needs to see authentic Mm -hmm. Christian Christianity just walked out, yeah. and it's real messy. And uh, because the we're, the world's in a it's a crisis. We're in a worldwide crisis with mm -hmm. racism and mm -hmm. and you know the government and and you know the pandemic and all this crazy stuff. And we'll know months from now what is you know what's been real and what's been fake. But the, it doesn't matter about politics. What matters is. The mis our mission is the Great Commission. That's right. And we got to reach people where they're at right now. And more than ever, people are in a hurting place. I've heard a doctor talk about how there's been more suicides than actually the lives that have been taken with the coronavirus. Wow. And, um, you know, depression has gone up, suicide. People get molested at home. Uh, wow. People getting drunk and using drugs because of everyone being isolated. All things, these things have gone up yeah. globally. So what does that mean for people like us? Mm -hmm. The Great Commission, mm -hmm. this is the prime time, and harvest is ripe, and this is where we have to step in. And right. Yeah. How do you do it working with those young people? You go to the schools. Yes, exactly. So, uh, do they receive your message? Or? Yeah, so, so, what I'm, so basically when, what we, our whole thing is we reach people, and our whole mission is to go to the students. And um, right now, school is going to be going back into session, so this is my main focus is in September when it starts. We're going in. Yeah. with the gospel message. It's very simple. You know, people think you have to come up with this big fancy message. We go in with the truth of the gospel and through the truth of the gospel to students that are going through these things. Yeah. You bring them the truth that God loves them. He wants to forgive them. They're never too far gone. He wants to, uh, you know, make them a new creation in Christ. And a lot of that baggage and stuff, these, these sins that have been in their life, that have been controlling and dominating their life, they get to hear the good news that Jesus came on a rescue mission out of eternity to good. die for the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually got to be with you mm -hmm. when we went to, what was it, a rally? We went to a school auditorium, and you had a big old event where hundreds of people yep. accepted Jesus right there in a the gym auditorium, right? I think it was Kavina, Kavina mm -hmm. High School or something. Yeah, yeah, yep. it was powerful. And, that, and you know what's powerful, Ryan, is how you have, God has given you the ability to touch the high schools all over the world. Mm -hmm. I think it was you that said it, that that is a mission field that is not tapped into, but God has really given you a lane. And I understand too, it's not just in the United States, which is a miracle in itself, Yeah. but now God is even using you to touch Mexico as well. And what other countries have you uh, been? We've been to Australia. We've been to uh, all over the United States. We went to Canada. 
I was supposed to be actually in Asia and Hong Kong before the riots. Everything got shut wow. down. I was supposed to be in Chile, and then the riot or the pandemic shut us down. So right now, there's a lot of uh, opportunity to go to Africa, Europe, and different places. So we're just waiting for everything to lift, and then we're going to start infiltrating the high schools again and bringing the gospel to the students. Do you have music you take with you? Or, uh, no, or it's you actually... Just- we keep it very simple because, you know, for the production costs, we have, uh, we just play a playlist with some speakers. We have our banners up for our tour called Kill the Noise. Mm. And then uh, we give out some free giveaways. And then I just grab the mic as you were there. And I just tell my story and I integrate the, the good news of the gospel message, the cross. And then I just say, if you want to receive Jesus, come forward. You may, you're able to make altar calls. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, powerful. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah. So in, in the United States, you know, to encourage people, because I know you guys go to schools as well, is that... In the United States, it's legal for us to go into the schools through the Bible clubs. Oh, so when you when you do the Bible club, you get the gymnasium for the day, and then you, you fly the whole school. So when they come into the schools, or when they come to the gymnasium, they're there by choice. Mm. So basically, you could fill it with hundreds of people, depending on where, what schools you're in. You give the gospel, you pray for them, lead them in a sinner's prayer, pray that they get filled with the Holy Spirit, and then give them the Gospels of John from the Gideons, get them plugged back into the Bible club, which they mm-hmm. get them plugged into the church. And then we'll start laying hands on people and praying for them individually. Yeah. It's like, it's like it turns into a church service. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible. So that's what we've been doing uh, for the last four years. We've seen over 75,000 students give their life to the Lord in the public Praise school system God. around Praise the world. God. And I mean, we're in Mexico. I've led, I've led probably like six mayors to the Lord. Teachers, principals, mm, wow. cops. Yeah. Uh, uh, we pray. We went to the juvenile detention centers, uh, the prisons, and we're just we're seeing a revival break out. You have your own team for that. Uh, we work with, wherever we go. We work with the local churches. Okay. So if we go to Mexico, say if we're working with, we work with all different churches around the world. So if, say if we went with Victory Outreach, we'd work with the local churches. They'd get us into the schools, and then we'd get everyone plugged back into the churches. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Then along with that, Ryan, you know. One thing that I didn't get to tell you, but we got some exciting news, man. We've really been taking off with our young adult and student ministry. And within that, some high schoolers have really taken their place in California, actually in the Whittier District. And recently what got approved before this pandemic hit, man, it's really thrown a monkey (laughs) wrench and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the principal has seen the students come into the Bible club that one of our high schoolers got on fire about. Yeah. And he says, I could see the transformations in these students, not just in their attitude and the way that they conduct themselves, but even their grades began to go up. And he says, whatever you want to do, you could do. And so what we had planned was to have a district-wide baptism. Wow, that's wow. where we're going to baptize students oh, yeah. into the wow. public school, wow. the pool right there. And we were going to have hundreds of high schoolers go and get baptized, and make a public declaration that they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Epic. But this pandemic is almost over and I am <laughs> so excited for all the things we're going to step into. And Ryan, you've been making a tremendous global impact and we're really we're really blessed to just be connected and to see the God, yeah. the things that God is doing through your ministry. And I'm excited for what's ahead. Yeah. As we get out of this, God's going to do some powerful things. I'm believing for revival to hit the high schoolers, to hit the college students, to hit our generation. Yeah. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of people here today, Ryan, who, you know, I think what's powerful about our founder and about yourself is that you are a young adult, but you could still touch the high schooler. You're still able to relate with the next generation. I blows my mind about our founder. He doesn't just relate with people who came up in his ministry. He He touches everybody. He's a big teenager. Right? (laughs) I'm sure you feel connected. I feel connected. Everybody feels connected. Totally. Right? Yeah. But what would you say is the key to connecting with those high schoolers? I think God has given you a special anointing in that. But what would you say is the key that you connect with them? It, it clearly, as you guys all know, we're, we're all Holy Ghosters. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that mm-hmm. manifests and, and draws all man to himself. It's just being in tune with, with what God wants to do and just having that faith to step out and put yourself out of, like, stepping out of the boat and just depending and knowing that God's going to show up. And uh, so, you know, I just, again, I'm just authentic to... I just tell my story. I'm not trying to impress anyone. I'm just telling 
them of where I was, what God did, and now what God's doing in my life. And that is the attraction of the good news. The gospel mm -hmm. is what God could do. He could take someone and transform them. And there's only one of you on this planet. There'll only ever be one of you. And God created you and designed you for a specific purpose on this planet. Yeah. And everyone wants to know why they're placed here and what their mission is here on planet Earth. And once you let them know that God can do that in their, in their life and they actually see your story and they're seeing people's lives transforming them around them like yours, like you've heard about those students, it's attractive and they want it and they want the real thing. They don't want to play church. They just want a relationship with the God of the universe and to live that life that they were created for. You know, whatever ministry you have that God has called you, mm -hmm. God is going to anoint you for that ministry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why he has anointed you, Holland, huh? Yep. Yeah. What do you see for the future, both of you? Well, we were talking about it on the way up because one of the things that the Lord spoke to us in December, you know, for 2020, everyone said 2020 is going to be a year of clear vision, a year of provision and all these things. And the Lord said, no, it's not going to be a year of clear vision. It's going to be a year of tested vision. Your vision is going to be tested. Mm. And he said, it's going to be a year of storms. Mm -hmm. And he told me, though, that uh, you wouldn't just survive the storms. You would thrive through the storms. Powerful. And I think that that's what I've seen. I've seen the church thriving through the storm. Yeah, and, uh, and so someone you know, heard me say that, and they said, you're the only one saying this. Everyone else is saying it's going to be a year of blessing. No. So we'd rather mm -hmm. listen to them. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. after this pandemic hit, they came back and said, you were the only one that got it right. So what wow. do you see is happening yeah. next? And I said, well... What I see happening next is what happened to the children of Israel. You know, they were at uh, Passover. They were in their homes. Death surrounded them. But what happened after that? A great deliverance. Mm. There was a great deliverance and, and that they were delivered out of Egypt. And then there was a great outpouring on Mount Sinai where God visited with the people. And I said, what well, we're going to see in the future, and I think it's going to happen in the fall, the spring, we're going to see a, a great deliverance through our nation. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people coming to Christ all over. Mm. There's going to be a great outpouring of evangelism. And then there's going to be a great visitation on the church, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's going, to, it's going to be an outpouring of power. It's going to be an outpouring of healing. We're going to see uh, transformation. And then Jesus is going to come back. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That is good news. That is good news. Yeah. You know, Ryan, you know, you share a lot out there. Why don't you share a little bit about your story and maybe you could even pray for people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so um, as I grew up out here in, in uh, the L.A. area, from a young age, I just went after that shiny object. You know, not only does Jesus call us to be fishers of men, but Satan is a fisher of men as well. Mm. And he's likes to, he wants to catch us. He wants to hook us to addiction and suicide and depression and anxiety and pornography and all of this stuff and, and bring all this baggage upon our life to hold us, to keep us slaves, basically, to sin. And uh, that's basically what happened to me. I got caught up at a young age, worked in the music industry for many years, still currently working in the music industry with a lot of bands and stuff and managing a professional skateboard team. But through all that, I got caught up in drugs and alcohol and using every drug on the planet from heroin to crack all the way down to, you know, Zanny bars and just a life of chaos, but yet making money, successful, but yet like just walking like a dead man, like the, the TV show, uh, The Walking Dead. I just felt dead inside, but yet I had everything. And it wasn't to that place when I t had my third OD in my hotel room after nine days of cocaine, Xanax, and alcohol. Um, the team found me, and they thought I was dead. By God's grace, I came out of it, and that was when I decided that there had to be more to life than this. And it w is, is this is why I'm here on planet Earth to just party and feel empty? Well, after I went after God, I asked him to forgive me of my sins. That's the repenting. It just means to change your heart and mind. From going, instead of going in this direction, you just change and you go the opposite direction mm -hmm. towards God. And what he does is through the living water, the torrents of living water, he starts cleansing you. He starts cleaning your whole mind, your body, and everything, and, and putting his thoughts and his mind and his peace and the work of the Holy Spirit inside you and showing you who you are, your identity in Christ. And everything that I thought I was going to lose, like I work with bands, skateboarding, uh, you know, all this fun, crazy stuff, I thought my life was going to be boring. Well, what happened is God got those desires and he gave me put new desires in my heart. And those, those uh, talents and everything I had, he actually 
has uh, grown them. Mm. So now I'm doing more than I ever have. I'm still doing everything that I did. I still work in the music industry. I'm still doing music festivals. But I'm doing way more, I'm doing radio shows and movies and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm able to bring the Great Commission to uh, the world, um, worldwide as I travel. And um, I just really realized that everything I thought that I was going to lose, God gave it back to me as I surrendered it. Because that's true worship is to say, God, I'm yours. My life's yours. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I gave it all to him. But what I've learned from Jesus Christ is he takes it. He wants to see your heart, and then he gives it all back, mm. and then more, and he blesses you. And literally, that word sounds so cliche, blessing. You know, he does want to bless you, and he will bless you, and he will show you the most incredible life that you could ever imagine. And that's basically what happened, in short, with my story. And um, I would like to challenge you guys here today. Jesus isn't religious. Jesus came against the whole religious system because it was broken back in the Old Testament. It was made of rules and regulations, but what God wanted is a relationship with mankind. That's why he sent his son. And God wants to do that in your life today. And it comes down to the simple thing. It's all by faith. All you have to do is believe by faith that Jesus Christ died on the cross yes. and he raised from the dead. We are in, 2000, we are in 2020. A, a, a A.D. after the death of Christ. We have B.C. before the death of Christ and A.D. after the death of Christ. Jesus split time in half. He died on the cross. He raised from the dead. And by, by believing in him, you will have eternal life. And what happens is when you have eternal life, your name is written in the book of life. That means when we take our last breath, which could be in 100 years from now, it could be today. But when we take our last breath, we will be immediately in the presence of God, and it's all about eternal life. God loves you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to implant the Holy Ghost in your life, and the job of the Holy Ghost is to destroy everything that is unholy in your life and give you that new life and purpose. And it all comes down to this. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness and just mean it in your heart. Just say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Like, I'm a sinner. And, you know, I'm just talking about my myself. Like, I fall short every day. I'm not perfect. I'm not a spiritual giant. I don't have it all figured out. But what I do know is that I love him, and I'm going to follow him, and I just ask for forgiveness every day. And what he does is immediately, a lot of you guys are carrying this heaviness. A lot of you guys have depression, suicide, addiction. Maybe things have happened to you at a young age. You've been molested, and you've been having these strongholds in your life. Jesus is ready to come, and the king is ready to come now. Amen. And he's ready to come and break all that stuff off of you, encounter you with the Holy Spirit. He wants to heal you spiritually, and he can even touch you physically right now. So I would ask you to do this. Just say this out loud. There's nothing special about this prayer that I'm going to say. What's special is that you mean it in your heart. And you mean it with everything in your heart. Just say right now, say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I give you my life in full surrender. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with the fire and the power. Release it from the head to my feet right now and remove all. What is not of you, break any spiritual chains, strongholds that have been connected to me from the enemy, break them right now in the name of Jesus. Seal me with the blood that was shed on the cross and use my life for, you, for whatever you want to do, Lord. And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you just touch people right now through these screens. Yes. Lord, those ones that have physical pain in their body, illnesses, heal. you told the disciples, you said to go out, cast out demons, and heal the sick and kill, every, cure every disease. And Lord, that's just a work of your grace and your Holy Spirit. So in Jesus' name, I just pray that you just touch them right now and that healing power will touch them right now. All pain go, diseases go, even people that are dealing with demonic stuff, break that right now, Lord, and set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you say, whoever the Son of God sets free is free indeed. So in Jesus' mighty name, do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I Lord. believe God has heard that prayer right where you are, right there in the living room or wherever you may be, right there in your home. God has heard that prayer, and now you just have to take it by faith. Yeah. You, you receive them, and after you receive them, you start the walk of faith. Remember that God loves you. Mm -hmm. God is able to do the impossible. Whatever need you have, God is able to meet that yes. need. Amen. And praise God. This has been another program of the power of the Holy Spirit setting people free. We see this every week. God 
is moving yeah. by his spirit. God is moving by his power. That's what victory outreach is all about. Believing God for the miraculous. And I believe today he's healed some people yes. today. Amen. There are people that have prayed that prayer of faith and their sins have been forgiven. It's been so good to have Ryan as my co-host. Yeah. It's been great to be with you. And amen, you did a good job. All right, come you on. You don't look like Julie. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't meet that criteria amen. today. It's so good having Holland with us. It's just it's great. great. Yes. And also Ryan, my God, Thank what you. ministries. Powerful, yes. powerful ministries. So great having you on today. And, uh, and I'll be, we'll be back again next week on Tuesday. And then don't forget that on Thursday, Julie and Doreen comes on. And I uh, look forward to hearing them as well on Thursday, Thursday morning, uh, Thursday afternoon. Yes, Amen. That's right. So it's great having you. Listen, God bless you. And may the glory of God be moving within your life in a special way. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today to our live broadcast. You too can also be part of giving right there where you're at, whether you're at home watching or on the go. Simply by clicking on the link in the description below or do our Victory Outreach International app. Let's take a look at how easy it is to give. Generosity made simple. Text VOI to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter your amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, enter your payment details and confirm your gift. Thank you for your generosity. Now we can stay connected wherever you go. Download the Victory Outreach app and stay connected with Victory Outreach International. Get important updates and announcements. Learn more about our ministries. Stay connected with events, prayer requests, and more. Watch the latest video in our media section. Easily share content on social media within the app. Give from your phone in seconds. A convenient way to stay connected.